I'm a physician, and after practicing for many years, I discovered that there's another way I can have greater impact, is I can get involved in transforming our healthcare systems so that we can achieve the promise of technology in everyday life. The current conversation has me very excited because through the developments of quantified self, we now po can do things that we dreamed of in the past. We can accomplish more of what we used to call the impossible every day. And yet that conversation also worries me, and that's why I wanted to share these stories with you today. Because there's a problem with quantified self, there's a problem with quantified, and there's a problem with the use of self. Why I know that is not just because of a physician and um, talking to my colleagues and my patients, but also of a personal experience. For the first um, years of my life, I was a patient. This is me, not that long ago. <laughs> this is an x-ray that represents a fracture that I had when I was 11 months old. So imagine a tiny baby falling off a high chair, a fairly innocuous daily event that somehow went wrong. For those of you who don't know, this is the fracture. Uh, both bones were broken, and both bones didn't heal well. In fact, they got infected. And from that moment on, for the first nine years of my life, I went through something like 27 different surgeries. I have no idea how my parents survived all of this, because now that I'm a mother, the thought of this terrifies and still sends um, goosebumps down <laughs> my spine. Because my mom, at some point, was told, your daughter's not going to make it through the night. Um, she was also told that the only way we can save your daughter's life is to amputate. Um, and yet, through the miracles of modern science, I have two arms, and they're both functional. I was the beneficiary of scientific research that produced a new antibiotic at the time called tetracycline that I had to be on for many, many months, but it saved me from that uh, horrible infection. I was a beneficiary of orthopedic surgeons who developed a technique that allowed them to take away massive portions of the bone and through this external metallic rod re have the bone regrow to its normal size. These technologies shaped who I am, and while this was my past, I decided to make that also my present. I became a physician hoping to have that type of impact to the patients that I treat every day. The other influence in my life was Star Trek. <laughs> Everyone knows I love Star Wars as well, but Star Trek influenced my idea of what physicians are going to be in the future. And every one of us has a favorite doctor in the series. This one was mine. I love the idea of becoming one of those physicians with a tricorder who could instantly cure any kind of condition that was happening to the patients and go baldly beyond where things were. And then I realized that everyday practice is not like that. If you've been to a hospital lately, show of hands, does that look like the hospital you've experienced? No, yet it's coming. It's very, very soon. There are, this is another Star Trek shot of the future. On the left, you see the genome, then you see all the quantified measurements of the self, and then you can actually see the red blood cells real time. And that is the kind of reality that quantified self projects are enabling in some places on Earth already, and it's coming to a hospital near you. And yet, this concerns me, because from my personal experience living through all of this and seeing my patients go through this, the quantified self is just half of the answer. And there are three things that are really important that we need to start introducing in the conversation, and those we actually don't know exactly how to shape or create, but they're the most important things. Number one is that the most important thing cannot be measured. I can introduce this person and say, 64-year-old male with liver cancer. Do you know who that person is? Just because we can measure everything about them, do we know what they care about, what makes them happy, what makes them scared, who else is involved in their life who needs to be part of that conversation? So there's a question that research developed. It's a question, what do I need to know about you as a person to provide the best care possible today? How many of you here have been asked that question by your healthcare providers? Not at all. How many of you wish you were asked that question? Yeah, what I thought. We all want to be known. We all want in those moments of profound vulnerability where illness strikes, where we're afraid of what's going to happen next. 
for people to get to know us as people and understand what's important to us. One of the most difficult um, situations I ever experienced in healthcare was a surgery that actually went perfectly well. It was a bilateral, so both knee replacement on an older woman, and uh, the surgery went well. There were no complications. Her rehab was stellar, and she could walk again without a problem. Yet no one asked her what's the most important thing for her in her life. And it turns out that it was praying. She would go to church every day and kneel. And yet the prosthetic that was used in that case, the one absolute thing she could never ever do again is go down on her knees. So the surgery succeeded, and yet we failed the patient. We need to start to get to know the things that we cannot measure. The second most important thing is those images in Star Trek seem to imply that it's the physician and the patient alone. And yet, everything about I've, what I've experienced is it takes a team. When illness strikes, it happens to the entire family. It happens to many different providers who get involved. And it's very similar to an orchestra. Everyone is very motivated, well-trained, and passionate to produce music. And yet, the difference between an orchestra that produces music and one that creates noise is that there's a script that people understand what the plan is and what their role within that plan is. And the most important person is an orchestra conductor. In our healthcare systems, we need to start creating the opportunity for people to step up and say, I know what we should be doing next, and I'm going to organize everyone so that everyone works as a team, so that patients don't navigate this experience alone. And that's the third most important thing. The smallest things can make the biggest difference. We ask patients how they feel about their healthcare journey, and they use the following words. Confused, worried, overwhelmed, and lonely. Those are not good words. Those are not the kind of things that make you positive, that allow you to have the energy to fight whatever medical issue you're having. I want to create a system through technology that allows people to continue to enjoy life to feel supported and connected at every moment of their experience, whether they know the diagnosis yet or whether the treatment started working or not. There are all these moments in healthcare that there's nothing to be done. We've done the technical part, and now we need to let life figure it out and create the solution. But in those moments, we can step in and ensure that people are not lonely. We can create a daily dose of happiness. A moment of happiness, a smile when things are vulnerable and things are not going right, a smile in life's most imperfect moments. And that would be success in our healthcare system, wouldn't it? The World Health Organization 30 years ago produced a definition of health that is often forgotten. The state of complete physical, mental, social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. We need to start thinking about what would that future healthcare system be like if that is the definition we aspire to, and where the clinical outcomes of whether we cured the cancer or not matter, but what matters more is what was the experience of that patient and that family through that. As a kid being sick, I have these vague memories of experiences in the health system, of nurses and doctors taking the time to explain to me what was going on, to let my parents see me right before being whisked off to surgery. And I have experiences of profoundly the opposite, of being completely surrounded by machines left by myself. I don't know how old I was, but I remember how that felt. And I would love to have a system where no one feels like that. So if we are to create that beautiful image of the future, I see that as a combination of the patient, the doctor, and a number of other people who get involved in a journey. And redef redefining the modern healthcare team to not just include the medical profession, but everyone else who needs to be involved in order for the person to feel supported. And adding to that dashboard another dashboard, which is your life dashboard. What are the activities that you want to accomplish in real life in order to fully fulfill the incredible promise of digital health? And while all of this conversation was <laughs> futuristic, it may happen in the next 5, 10, 20 years. But in the meantime, all of us can start sharing the message with people who have or are undergoing through serious health issues. Please, when you show up and see the healthcare system, answer that question of what do they need to know about you as a person to provide the best care possible. When you get diagnosed with a bad condition or a loved one is, surround them with a team of people who can step in and help so they feel supported through the journey. And remember that it's not just about the medical treatments, but it's about these small moments of connectedness and happiness that can be brought in to make the person better. 
that is the pledge of what I would like to see accomplished. And I'd like to find everyone else who's interested in taking that conversation about the quantified self into something else that we haven't named yet, but should be named as our final frontier and destination in building a really um, a medical system of the future that we can all thrive in. Thank you.